Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life, and today I'm going to share with you the seven reasons why Joan and I purchased a fifth wheel RV. Well, hi, it's Jerry. Uh, we get so many comments from our website, ilovervlife.com, or here on the YouTube channel in the comment section. Thank you for those. I always look forward to the comments and look forward to uh, replying to them. Um, as well as just going to all the RV forums that are available out there for you to gain information. And those are all worthwhile places to go as you're searching to purchase your new camper. Uh, especially if you're new to the RV lifestyle. Should I get a Class A or a Class C? Should it be a, a diesel? Should it be a gas burner? How about just a small pull behind? Or how about let's jump into the deep water and get us a fifth wheel? And there's just so, so, so many different questions. It, it, it really comes down to this. It is a personal preference. It's very, it, buying an RV is like buying a home. Um, some people want brick, some want siding, some want condos. You know, we could go through this list on and on and on and on why we make these different types of lifestyle purchases. And there's no difference in those personal preferences for your lifestyle. So today, I'm going to give you the seven reasons why Joan and I purchased a fifth wheel when we were looking at the various options that were out there. Number one was mobility. Uh, there's a number of reasons that people use RVs. Some uh, want to move every day or so or just constantly move space after space after space and just be able to see what's available to them. They may boondock, they may dry camp, they may do those various types of things just to be able to go into a specific location, see what's there and move on. Joan and I don't do that. Um, after you know driving a ton truck and pulling 14,000 pounds it's 40 feet long I, I gotta I gotta admit to you I'm a bit beat especially if I've been on the road five or six hours going to a location and by the time you kick the slides out and you hook everything up you know you're a couple hours into that I want to stay a while so what Joan and I do before we travel is we'll look at a specific area and we do what we call the hub and spoke rule so we um, you know, we think of a hub and a, a spoke of a wagon wheel. We'll go into a specific location and then we'll drive up to 50 miles out into any of those areas to see, you know, what might be available. And that's worked out well for us. We've been doing that for over four years now. And um, again, it's a more leisurely travel. It's a more comfortable travel. And then you've got time to be able to go out and see these beautiful locations. There's 49 states that we plan to go to. Uh, there's Canada with that we hope we can get to at some point in time and we want to be able to drive and see these so again a fifth wheel is absolutely ideal for something like that because again you drive to a specific location and uh, then you park it and then you're able to go out and see all those great areas second and very important to us was living space uh, we wanted our RV experience to feel like home. We had planned on spending many months uh, in a stretch, sometimes three months, even more, uh, out on the road. And when you're in that type of an environment, we wanted to be comfortable. We wanted to be very comfortable, as a matter of fact. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we had uh, plenty of living space that we could stretch out. If we met somebody in the campground, we could welcome them in and have a meal and just, you know, sit down and talk and, and enjoy time with one another. And that was very important for us. And, and, and from time to time, uh, our kids like to camp as well. Um, and we'll all go to a campground together and we want to be able to spend time with one another. So we'll move from camp, you know, camper to camper, RV to RV. And we wanted to be able to have plenty of space to be able to do that. Uh, I will put up top um, a, a, a video that I did a year or so ago that shows how we retrofitted our RV to feel more like home. We took all the RV furniture out of uh, out of our fifth wheel and put in you know apartment and home style furniture in here and again it was all that feel and that comfort level that we were looking for. Let me if you haven't seen that video let me just give you a quick tour and just kind of show you how our setup is here in the fifth wheel. 
When you walk inside our fifth wheel, you'll come into the kitchen area. Uh, you see we have a residential refrigerator. That's important to us. Um, and you also see uh, the island and the cooking space. If you have not seen our kitchen upgrade, that was an eight-part series. And I'll put this link up above here where you can start with number one and see what we did in this specific area. But, um, you know, we needed the cook prep area. We have the, the big kitchen sink that we enjoy. And in plenty of storage and I'll just kind of let you see this area over here the little coffee bar and the pantry area that we that really will hold enough food for us to be out for a week even two weeks from that standpoint um, I'll turn around here slowly uh, I still work on the road I'm a web designer and internet marketer uh, by trade and uh, you see my desk area. This is just a, a converted dinette with our dual monitors. Uh, while I'm at it, I'll uh, put a link up there and show you my dual monitor project that I did. But I think this is kind of like the piece de resistance. Um, if, you, if you look at this, you will see where we changed out all that. Um, I call it RV leatherette. I don't have a better term for it. But uh, here you'll see a apartment style sofa. Uh, it's, it's very spacious. And then I think we purchased these Euro style recliners off Wayfair. Um, found a good deal, kind of a closeout on those. And it just made it super, super comfortable. And then of course, there's our entertainment area. So it's very easy just to relax. You know, this does have that small apartment feel. There's the steps that goes up into the bathroom and the master bedroom. I know I just talked about living space, but number three on our list was 100% living space. Okay, when you're looking at a class A, B, or C, um, a portion of that RV is going to be given to the driving component of that vehicle. Now, I understand maybe with a class A and maybe even some class Bs, it's a little bit different, but those class Cs, you can lose a substantial amount of either living space or the overall space in the camper that you have. You've got, you know, from hood to engine to dash to seats. Yeah, sure, you might have some space overhead to either store or that's where your entertainment system may be at. And I understand there's some give and take in those areas. But when you're looking at a fifth wheel, 100% of that space is living space. I just showed you that from, from end to end, from bedroom you know, to entertainment center, we have 100% living space. So I don't have to give any of that up to the actual RV for my you know, captain chairs, my steering wheel, and all those types of things to be able to get down the road from point A to point B. So when I put 40 feet in here, I've got 40 feet of living space. Well, Jerry, you have a tow vehicle, sure, but that tow vehicle it can be, you know, if I don't have a space for that, I can put it across the road or I can put it in an overflow space if I have to. But I've got 40 feet of living space from front to back. To us, that was very, very important. Number four, more options for tow vehicles. Okay, I'm gonna digress here for just a second. Class A's, Class B's, Class C's. I know you don't have to have a tow vehicle, but if you have the type of travel that Joan and I have, whether you're out for many weeks, many months, or if you're a full-timer, you're gonna to wanna to have a secondary vehicle. Bicycles and motorcycles are gonna to get to be a drag. You're gonna be limited where you can tour, or if you want to tour and you've gotta drive there, you've gotta unhook your a, B, or C from that location and then drive to it, then come back to the campground. That's a bit of a pain. It really is. And again, you don't want to be out in inclement weather on a motorcycle or a bicycle trying to bring groceries back. That too is a pain. So you're going to want to have a secondary vehicle. Tow bars, braking systems, cost. And if you don't want to go into that, your significant other is going to be driving the tow vehicle. And you just don't really get that travel experience of being able, both of you sitting up front and enjoying going to wherever your next destination leads you. Then you have the tow vehicle for the fifth wheel. More options. I can select Ford, Chevy, uh, Dodge, to whoever types of vehicles that I typically like to drive and purchase. But above and beyond that, this is the big reason. I can have this truck serviced at any dealer. Okay, I've got a Ford F-350. If I'm out in the boonies, 
more than likely I'm going to be able to find a Ford dealer that it can be more than just you know having the oil changed or, or, or tires put on it or, or brakes or something like that but if I was to have an engine or transmission problem I've got better options to be able to have that vehicle serviced and that is a huge huge deal for us versus if you've got a class A with a big diesel in it you're really going to be limited where you can go. Number five is cost. Uh, my daughter, her husband, and the grandkids called me this weekend and said, hey, there's a big RV show down here. We'd like to go. Uh, come with us, Pops. Uh, it'll be fun. So off we go. Hours and hours and hours uh, looking at uh, all these different manufacturers and looking at all these A's, B's, C's, pull-behinds, fifth wheels, etc., etc. First thing that popped into my mind was, why do I want to do this? We just got our gateway fixed up like we wanted, but that was okay. But above and beyond that, when I looked at 40 feet, slides out, 400 square feet of living space, the closest thing that would come to that was a big Class A. Okay, I know you can have you a Super C, big diesel freight liner out there that might have a, a similar length. But when I looked at this fifth wheel, and I looked at what we paid for this and then what we paid for our F-350 dually ton truck, the cost difference was very substantial, almost double the difference of being able to buy a comparable vehicle in a Class A to a Class C. So for us, cost was a big issue. We had a limited budget and this gave us the living space and the style of travel that we wanted in a fifth wheel. Number six, fuel economy. I'm shocked. And we did a lot of research and I was shocked. And when I found out to the type of fuel economy that people were getting with those V10 Tritons and either Class C's or Class A's. Wow, six miles to the gallon. Hmm. Um, I mean, I even heard some stories of something even less when they got up in the mountains. Then you have all the noise and all the things that goes on with that, but that's really a separate issue. Just when I started looking at the fuel economy that you could get with a nice diesel, even though we're pulling 14,000 pounds, look, I've talked to friends of mine who are pulling 20,000 pounds. Here's the shocker. This is really a shocker. On flat land, we're getting about 12 and a half miles per gallon with our diesel. That's substantial. And I understand diesel to gas, there can be anywhere from 50 to maybe even a dollar's difference in the price, depending on what the, where you're at located in, a, in, in the country. But, wow, what a huge difference of uh, being able to get this kind of gas mileage. Okay, I was up in the mountains. We were doing, you know, 7, 8, 9, 10 miles of 8% grade and then up and hill, down a hill, up and hill, down a hill. Even in that, 11 and a half miles per gallon. That is quite substantial. In a Class A or a Class C, it's really going to be rare for you to be able to see that kind of a mileage that you're going to get in with a good diesel and a fifth wheel. For us, having a tow vehicle was very, very important for our fifth wheel if we had to have long-term service needs. Let me give you for instance, what if something happened to the motor transmission of your Class A or Class C? Hey, if it can be fixed in hours, great, you're not going to be that inconvenienced. But if it is going to take a day, an overnight stay, or multiple days while you're waiting for parts, or it's a very, very difficult repair, where are you going to go? You're going to have to go find a hotel motel somewhere that you can stay in for us that's even a bigger problem because we travel with you know with pets and we want to be able to have a place that's pet friendly that we can stay in we don't have to worry about it in our fifth wheel we can take the vehicle even if it has to be towed to a specific location have it repaired however long it takes but we still have our home and our campground and we can be comfortable and we don't have to worry about you know where we're going to spend the night or what we're going to do with all of our stuff until we can you know get our you know get our motor back to where we can go for, to another location that to us was a huge huge benefit in having a tow vehicle for a fifth wheel so that's it our seven reasons oh look i know that there's a multitude more that's out there but probably when you start looking at them we can make a comparison that all campers have these things whether it's you know the type of bathroom or the type of bed or the type of storage that you have or the entertainment center that you use etc 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 they start becoming very common or at least for Joan and I in our comparisons they started becoming very common after we got past our big seven what we called our big seven so regardless don't wait 
don't wait. If don't don't be one of those that says, "Hey, it's year five, and I'm still trying to do my research before I get out on the road." You're going to look back, and you're going to miss it. Forty-nine states you can travel to, Canada. Uh, if you want to go down into Mexico, you know, just whatever you want to do, whatever trips your trigger and the type of travel, don't wait. Find an RV vehicle that that works best for you. And look, I'd love to have your comments and share them with the community. You know, uh, share with why you chose the type of RV you had and what were the key reasons for doing that. And if you have some personal questions that you would like to ask, if you're considering another type a vehicle, I would be glad to answer those. Go to ilovervlife.com and then up in the top you'll see a comment section uh, to where you can actually send me an email. And I get quite a few emails, but I promise you I will, uh, I'll answer your email and share with you whatever knowledge that I may have and, uh, and give you some tips as, as you start making your RV decision. Well, it's great to be able to share with you. Um, Click subscribe if you haven't done it. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And you know what? I do this for only one reason. <laughs> Here it comes. You know why too, don't you? That's right. I love RV life. <laughs>